to make sh the, the whole theory behind sampling and stuff is based on calculus principles like how sampling occurs how they sample the waveform enough times to make sure that when they digitize it and then there's a lot of stuff you guys haven't ever studied like you convert it to digital and then you convert it back to analog well, that conversion has to be done in such a way that human beings can't hear any things wrong they can't hear any difference there's the mathematics underlying that process or calculus base so. wow uh, another one I've told people is uh, this class we studied this idea of a linear approximation. You've seen that happen a fair number of times on questions where they say, find the line tangent, use the line tangent to approximate. Okay. Um, everybody has a phone. In your phone, there's an amplifier. The amplifier makes a very quiet sound louder, right? You know what that is. Okay, that amplification is based on a linear approximation. You can't do it without understanding that. So, you know, you're all asleep now. Okay, moving on. Cool. Uh, look, so there's a 12,000 liter tank, so I would circle that. Uh, units are usually important, so I circle that. So 12,000 liters of water is filled, so got some tank, 20,000 liters. Time equals zero, water drains from the tank at this rate. So I always want to keep track of amounts versus rates. So this is the rate of water draining from the tank. Uh, liters per hour is the rate. And they give me a function. I don't really worry about it. I just note it. And now I go to part A. So part A says, is R continuous at time equal five? So a flashcard memory is a function when they want to show on an FRQ, we practiced this twice now actually, 2011, 2012. They want to show if a function is continuous, you've got to use limits. So you have to find the left-hand limit, you have to find the right-hand limit. 
Uh, they stopped right there because they discovered that the two limits are not the same. So there was no reason to continue. They just declared the function is not continuous because the left and right limits don't map. So how I justified that it wasn't continuous is I graphed the two lines and then I found the intersection and it was like 4.931, which would make it not continuous because if it's going from like, um, you know, zero to five and then five. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. Five, five would make it not continuous. Is that doesn't just by answer? It would probably give you one point for the work you did and coming up with the idea that it's not continuous. But, hey, everybody, you've got to memorize that any time on the AP test, FRQ section, that they say show continuous, they want limit from the left, limit from the right, value at the point. They want you doing all three. Now, we stopped at the third because we didn't have to. But that's how you need to do it. So you have to write out the limit. You can't just plug in the equation and like. So I guess plug. I the think you could do this. I think you could say the limit from the left is this number. Okay. You don't have to write this. How do we plug in the limit to the left in our calculator? So what I do in a calculator is I look up here and say, okay, I'm trying to see what's happening. A little less than five. So we just put four in. So just, well, four is quite a bit less than five. So like four point nine nine. Four point nine 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 would be good. Five. Okay. You don't put in four. Of course, a long ways away from five. So. Yeah, you understand. Okay. Keep talking. I have trouble asking questions. Okay. So when you have these piecewise functions. And R of T is technically two different equations. Do you need to specify which one you're using? I don't think so. They do, but I don't think you have to. Okay. Like, I think if you write the limit as time of, if T approaches 5 minus R of T, and you came up with this number, I think you're fine. I don't think you have to show anything else. Okay. No. <laughs> if you said X, would you get it wrong? I think they let that one slide. Okay. Please. Um, no, I don't know if I'd give you a point for that. Because it's not complete. You're not specifying what you're finding the limit of. So. Please, Matt. I actually like I put five, but I forgot to put like five like a little bit left. Like five minus five plus, I just put five. But they got points for that. Yeah, but that's not the limit. So that was your map, so that was for Blakely and Nathan. Please. So I kind of wrote down what I thought that says, the limit on the left has to equal the point on the uh, limit on the right. Mm -hmm. Is that, would they recognize that as a uh, way to justify it, or do we need to? Well, they recognize that as you have the right start. If you didn't do anything else, they won't. Like, you just cut. And then I found this, what, what each one was. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so let me look real fast. Please, uh, so I, if I did it, I didn't, 
I didn't say anything about limits. I just plugged in 600, 5, and it, whatever that. And then I did uh, the next one for greater than 5. And you just plugged in 5 in both places? Yeah. Um, I don't think they'll give you points. You have to use yeah, they want you talking about the limits. Okay. Yeah. Good question. I think two bubbles. So if I was, I got to that same conclusion and the same numbers and everything, but I had the wrong notation. Probably one of two. I think so. They, they so look at all of it and they go, okay, the understanding's really good. You got to take off something because the notation's lacking, but I think you get one of two. See, so I would still get one. Mm -hmm. But if we found that it was continuous, we would have to show both right hand down to the value at the point, right? Yeah, you find right, left, and left, all three. Um, for example, hold on a second. Just one more. I want to answer this question a little better here. function and say show that the function is continuous. To get the point, you've got to find the limit from the left, you have to find the limit from the right, you have to find the value of the function in the middle, and then you have to write your conclusion. So. Question? Super bad? That's what is this what you have? Sure. Back to this one. We're here, right? Okay, next one. <coughs> By the average rate at which water is draining from the tank. So I'm trying to find the average of something. This is the rate at which water drains. So to find the average rate, I want to find the average of R. So that's going to integrate. Okay. Is everybody okay to hear? Okay. We will. Next step. Okay. Perfect. Good job, Hattie. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Tell us about this. Thank um, you. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> that's coming up. Hey, you should always start here, though. Yeah, start there. Because you're finding the average of R. Uh, now, we have to take into account the fact that R is defined in two pieces. So the next line has to say this. And I've got to have a parenthesis because it's 1 over 8 times whatever happens. So R goes 0 to 5. <laughs> then I have another integral, 5 to 8. like this. But the 1 over 8 applies to both, so don't make the error of putting the parentheses in the wrong place. So right there. Question. And if it was non-factor, we could just stop right there, right? It would all depend on what they're asking. No, well, no, let me say it back to you. So this goes back to Matt's question, like when can you stop? Okay, if they say find the average rate, and it's non-calculator, you can't stop here because there's still calculus to be done. Now, if it said write an expression but don't evaluate, then you can right. stop. Yeah. Two problems. Please. If you don't, Yeah, they won't, you've got to split it. They want to see that you understand that you've got to do two different things. Okay? So, if you have this purple, you get two points. Please. So, why did I from the 
Let me see it back to you and see if this helps. It doesn't. Hey, don't talk. Don't talk when I talk. Can't handle it. Um, you would get this point for sure because you do have the right into grand. Okay. okay you get one point. You would, that's all you okay. get, though. One out of three. Here's why. What you're finding is you're finding the average of this section, and then you're finding the average of this section, okay. and then you're adding two averages together. It's not the same thing as finding the overall average. Okay. That okay. kind of helps. Yeah. Yeah, you want the overall average, not two not averages average. added. Okay. And you're right, you get a much bigger number. Would you ever yeah. do that? I wouldn't. I mean, but in any problem? Not that I could think of. Okay. So my thinking was like this, Meg. I have memorized it to find the average value of anything. I simply integrate whatever I want to average, divide by the width of the integral. Now, if it's a graph, I'm going to attack it graphically. Piecewise function, I attack it. That's two separate, just whatever. But with the same. Yes, the one eighth is all of them. So, good question. Two for Meg as well and Ray. <laughs> okay, now you can pick up your calculator and just type it in. So, the final point is for what I'm now writing on the board. Question? Yes, yeah, so if you did this all by yourself, no help, no notes, you get six problems. Um, okay, I should ask a question. Please. Somehow, I did all that stuff and I got like point oh by 0.053. Is that weird? Like That's okay. Then, they said oh, either one was fine. Oh, either one's fine. And then, on the way, it says, do you need your... Um, because, let's see. It's a rate. It is a rate, so it would have been better to say liters per hour. Absolutely. Okay. They didn't give points this time for the units, so you lucked out if you didn't. Okay. But the best habit really is to have them. Absolutely. Please. When you go to the five or to the point at which the two graphs are intersect. Because I went to like for our limits, sorry. Oh no. Um, the way a piecewise <laughs> function works is this is the formula for all values of t from zero to five. This is, so it doesn't matter where the intercept are. This is the formula for all values of t from 5 on. Does that answer your question? Super Ben, anybody else? Part C. Um, yeah, Find R prime, period. So I stop right there. Um, hey, it's very straightforward. <coughs> on lookup. Last time I met. If R is a piecewise function, so will R prime. R prime will also be piecewise. But don't forget, okay, this happens all the time. When you have a piecewise function, you take a derivative, it's very possible that there's a corner, or in this case, a discontinuity where the two pieces meet. We've already figured out that there's a discontinuity. So when I make the piecewise function, I need to remember that. So because in the first part they said, is R continuous? Oh, we said no. We said no. So, two for a kind of. Let's see, the first derivative, uh, let's do some work over here. Because that's the quotient rule. So I've got to do, let's see, bottom times the derivative of the top, which would be 600. Minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, which would be 1, divided by the bottom squared. Okay. I can stop now, back to Matt's question, because I don't have any calculus left to do, just the algebra. So R of t is that formula. Um, on an Inspire, you can do some stuff, yeah. But you don't have to. I wouldn't. Like, I don't know if you want to, I guess. Well, because I just grabbed the, um, the R2 they gave you and then just found the derivative of that point 3. That's what I did. Oh. I did that. I'm great. I'm doing more. See, I got distracted by the questions. I'll please. 
subtraction. We just need r prime of 3. We don't really need r prime of, well, oh, I see, yeah, I'm dumb. Okay, so you can do that. Yeah, I'm stupid. <laughs> You must use the word increasing. By 50 liters per hour. Every hour. Or per hour, if you want to put whatever. And the way you can write that is just say, 50 liters per hour, bigger line per hour. That's what's meant by the rate of the rate. It's the rate at which the rate itself is changing. Please. Do you have a question? Yeah. Um, so, if you're saying that 
you have to put the per hour per hour because you're saying at that hour the units of this are either listed as <coughs> liters per hour, per hour, or hour squared. You have to have one of the two. If you don't have these units, Reagan, or these units, they won't give you the point. If I put the rate increase in 50 liters per hour, or hour, or hour squared, at times three, is that correct? Did you say time equal three hours? The right, the rate increasing at 50 liters at time equal three. Did you say at time equal three hours? No. Then they won't give you the point. I have to say, you have to get units for time. You have to get units for the time as well. Mm -hmm. so that was if, I set, if I set hours, I would have got the point. So read it one more time slower. <laughs> the rate is increasing 50 liters per hour over hour at time equal three hours. Matt? I'm still a little bit confused about like the liters per hour per hour because like going off of what you wrote, to me it seems like we have an extra like hour in there because we're saying the rate is increasing by 50 liters per hour. So when that probably Let me say it back to you and see if this helps. If it doesn't keep talking. So this is saying that right at three o'clock, hour three, if you look at the tank, you see water coming out, you do not see 300 liters. You see some small amount coming out. If you waited an entire hour, you would theoretically see 300 liters flow by. Now that doesn't really happen because the rate's always changing. But does that make sense? Okay. This is saying that exactly at that moment, exactly at that moment, if nothing were, if nothing else were to change, like everything else were held constant, one hour from now, so at time four, the new rate would be 350 liters per hour. That's why it's an increase of the rate by this amount over one hour of time. <coughs> That's why it's this rate per hour. I don't know if that helped. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just confused why it was draining but it, by an increasing rate of 50. And so then you said that if it kept doing that, the R3, the R4 would be 350, but would it be draining? So or you let me say it back to you and see if this helps. Okay. So the tank is definitely draining. Okay. And this is describing how fast the tank drains. Yeah. So you look at 3 o'clock and you see water coming out of the pipe. And you're like, hey, if I put a big barrel under there and wait an hour, I'd have 300 liters in my little barrel. Okay, good there. Based on this, if everything stayed constant, an hour from now, it'd be coming out a bit faster. <coughs> Still draining. It's draining more rapidly. Instead of draining at 300 liters every hour, it's now draining at 350 liters every hour. Still draining. Okay, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Don't worry, please. So when we say that, uh, that the tank is increasing, so that means that the rate is increasing by 350. Well, the tricky thing is they, they made the problem a teeny bit, a little confusing, because there's an amount of water in the tank. And that amount is going down, for sure. But the rate at which it drops could be like slow or fast. So they're saying at time equal three, the rate at which water leaves the tank is 300 liters every hour. It's blowing up. The tank's going down. But one hour from now, it appears the tank's going to drain even faster. But it's still going down. The tank is always going down. So how do you, you know it's going faster because it's Because positive. the rate they gave you was, because they said in the beginning that the rate describes the rate at which water leaves the tank. So the thing that you're trying to reconcile, I think, and if this is wrong, you keep talking until it makes sense. I think you're trying to reconcile this, um, Abby. If I think of A of T as the amount of water in the tank, right? Okay, so this is the amount of water. And then I think of A prime as the rate at which that amount changes. A prime is actually equal to negative R. <laughs> I was pretty impressed with myself that I didn't jump. Um, okay, because the tank level is going down. But R is always a positive number. That can be confusing. 
Like if you graph R, like if you graph this, it's a positive value always because it's some number representing how fast water is leaving the tank. But that means that the rate at which the level is changing is the negative of that. And that's why the Danica's chart thing is kind of messed up. Anybody else? Um, next one. It says, right, but do not solve an equation. More noises. Right, but do not solve an equation involving an integral to find the time, they call it time A, when the amount of water in the tank is 9,000. So this is really what you're asking as well, Abby. They're saying, okay, we start with 12,000 gallons. If you integrate the rate at which water drains from the tank, the integral will compute how much water in total drains during that time period. So that's why they're subtracting here. Okay. The okay. rate is a positive number, but I gotta subtract what water gets taken away. So if I were to put, I know it says uh, like find the time of day, if I put the integral and the x, that would be wrong, right? But I think they probably let it slide. Okay. Yeah, if you put an x here instead of an a. Okay. Yeah. Wait, so why is it, why is it 12,000 minus the like, why would the integral get the beginning? Let me try to do this a different way and see if this works. Good job, you got it. No comment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. No. you don't have to say thank you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Abby was like, you know, I don't know what's happening. Okay. Hi, um, guys. Hi, guys. Uh, maybe this would help. I don't know. Let's say that G of their liters of water, right? So say W of T equals water in the tank. Okay, that would mean that W prime is the rate at which water, it's the rate at which the water level changes. But R of T is always a positive number. Like, it doesn't matter what you plug in here, you always get a positive number because it's the rate of water leaving. So R of T is not equal to W prime. R of T is equal to negative, sorry, negative R is equal to W prime. Does that feel good? Yeah. So I use that as chart now in the fundamental theorem. You could say this, you could say, hey, if we integrate W prime from zero to some unknown time, we'll find the change in the water level. Yeah. Like that, right? Yeah. And we keep going here, so we say, okay, this is the integral from zero. Is this kind of what you're thinking? Yeah. <laughs> so I get wt, w prime of dt, it's going to be w of a minus w of zero. Um, but w of zero is my 12,000. That's what I started with. So this equation is just fine, but I can make it look like that. Okay, yeah. So I switch these two. So W of zero, which is 12,000, is going to equal W of A, which is the 9,000, that's what I'm trying to get to. When this comes over here, oh, I did something wrong, hold on. as long as you say, if you say this. Yeah. 
But you have to say this. You can't put an R there. It doesn't work. So you can't say 0A R of T, D of T equals I totally relate to the, okay, look, look, look. I really do relate to the whole confusion about positives and negatives, and they do this to you all the time on the top. So you just got to keep working to get better at it. Sometimes they do it in a way that's not confusing at all. Sometimes it can be confusing. We have a certain amount of water in the tank. The tank's draining. But the rate they give you is a positive number. That kind of implies the tank is filling. But it's because it's the rate at which water leaves the tank. So the rate at which the water level will change has to be the negative of that value. So stay here with me for a minute. You could hear? I figured my mistake. So if I rearrange this to look like this, here's what I'm going to do. Okay, this is, so is everybody comfortable with here? Are we good here? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we've got 0 to A, W prime of T. Okay, W of A is 9,000. Is everyone comfortable with that? Yeah. There? Yeah. Okay. W of 0 is 12,000. Is everyone comfortable with that? Yes. Yeah. You good there? Okay. If I now move the 12,000 to that side, I'll have 12,000 plus the integral equals this. Mm -hmm. Is everybody good with that? So I have now 12,000 plus the integral from 0 to A of W prime must equal 9,000. Pretty good with that. But because W prime is the negative of R, put in negative R right there and you have their answer. So, Talk to me. Why is it negative R? I mean, I get why it's negative R for the form, but why is it not the negative R on the other Okay, golden question. Five pebbles for that. Oh, I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, it always comes down to how they have worded the problem. It really does. So you've got to keep track of okay, what's the amount I'm talking about. And is the rate they're giving me, is that a rate which causes the amount to go up or the amount to go down? If it's a rate which causes the amount to go up, then I count that rate positively. If it's causing the amount to go down, then in comparison to the amount, I have to count it negatively. It's very similar to this idea. You, we practice some problems. Keep listening. What was your question? So I gave you five. Um, we practiced some problems where they said, hey, there's gallons of, it was on a test I gave you. There's gallons of sewage in a tank. So this was the amount. This is the gallons. Mm -hmm. Are you good there? Yeah. That means there's a G prime, which is the rate. Mm -hmm. Right? Gallons per hour or something. But they don't tell you the formula for G prime. Instead, they say, hey, the amount, you know, the amount of sewage in the tank is going up by some rate. It's going down by some other rate. And you have to count both of them. You have to say, oh, I got it. G prime is going to equal the rate at which water enters the tank, counted positively, because it's causing G to rise. But the amount, the rate which is leaving, I count negatively. And the only thing different on this problem is they there was no rate coming in. The only rate was the rate going out. Oh, is that kind of how? That really helps. Good. That's what I'm looking for to make oh, a connection yeah, with the really previous helps. problem. That's why I had to say this. Because mm. R isn't, you know, R is the rate itself. There's some amount that is tied to the rate, but this is how they're tied. Because it's only the outgoing rate, it's not the incoming rate. In fact, that, that might be the better way to explain that this in the future. Really is that better? Because okay. I was trying to find a way to make it click for you guys, and I wasn't getting it. That felt better than it was. Okay, good. So please. Oh, Bria, please. All right. I was going to say, so then on B, um, on question B, so it's 
since it's, it's talking about the rate, but it says hover because it's not asking. Right, it has nothing to do with the amount this time. It's just the rate alone. So they didn't ask about the amount, it just said the rate itself. So then if it asks for the amount, it's Yes, if so let's... would have done like a min-max. Yes, no exactly. Problem, we would have really mm -hmm. needed that sooner. Yeah, so that was, that's where this would show wow. up, this idea. You'd say, hey, if I'm really trying to find when the amount... Now this problem doesn't make sense in that regard because the tank's always draining, right? But if they wanted you to do something like they could have said, here's one that they could do. They could have said, because they basically did in part D. They could have said, hey, go find the amount that's in the tank. I changed it to G, is that okay? I um, mean, the gallons, that'd be good. They said, go find the amount that's in the, well, let's go back to W, ah, I'm so confused. Mm -hmm. um, so what if they said, find the amount of water in the tank at hour five? Like that was the question. Then if you build this the same way you built other problems, get yeah, this chart again. This is the amount, W, right? So W prime, this is Brianne's idea, Blakely's idea. W prime has got to be the in rate, which is zero, subtract the out rate. The out rate is what they told you, R. That's where you would go. And now if you build the fundamental theorem using this, should be just fine. Yeah. Does that help? Okay, good. Um, I must have missed word. Where did you get negative R of T? So we have this tank of water. Is it just because it's leaving? Right. So the way that R relates to W is, like I said, I gave an example where we were talking about the sewage tank. And they said there are two rates involved. The rate which causes the sewage level to rise, I have to count that positively. The rate which causes the sewage level to fall, I have to count that negatively. Okay. And then you said you do have to state that? You, you can't just, well, you don't have to say this. You have to understand it. So like if I'm using the fundamental, you don't have to say it. You just have to make sense of it. Is that your question? Yeah, you, don't you don't have to say it. Okay. So do you think it's like a helpful thing with like these kind of problems with like the rate and stuff, just to always think of it in terms of like, there's an end rate, there's an out rate. Some of them may be zero, it may only be increasing or decreasing. So um, then if it's a situation like this. So I'll eyes up here for one second. Five for Nathan. Just listen to this. This setting is very good. Okay. It is amazing how just interacting with all of you, I hopefully get better and better ways of helping more people make sense of it. And I've never thought of this, what we just did. It never occurred to me. Okay, but I think it's really helpful. Do you agree? Okay. So we need a Brianna and Blakely's brainstorm picture on the wall. Can we, Please. Can we make one? Absolutely. Can we make a thing of that? <laughs> yes. Be famous like that? You'll be famous like that. I want to have it all to be to it. Here's, now, okay, Nathan. I, I think we can make a general statement, which is what you're trying to do, uh, that will apply to a whole bunch of problems. Now, until I try to go back to my head and do some other problems, I can't be 100% sure, but I, pretty, I feel pretty safe about it. There are lots of problems that deal with an amount of something. Fair? Yes. And then they deal with the rate at which that amount is changing. Sometimes they give it as a direct relationship. That's the easiest. Like the problem where they said, let the number of mosquitoes on an island be changing at some rate, R of T. But that was a very direct relationship. The number of mosquitoes is changing by this rate. So that rate alone has already incorporated the incoming rate and the outgoing rate. Fair? Yeah. So that's one way they can do it. The other way they've done it is like on this problem, where they said, hey, there's really only an outgoing rate. So the incoming rate was really zero. So that's why what you did was smart. You said, oh, so that means if this is the amount of water in the tank, and all they gave me was the outgoing rate, my W prime really is zero subtract. Because all they gave me was the outgoing rate. In some problems, so sometimes they'll just give you W and you just have W prime. Okay, it's just straightforward, there's nothing to do. Other problems we've seen is where they say, okay, the incoming rate is constant. Like they'll say it's 300. And the outgoing rate is some function. Like that. 
And so as they switch it the other way, they say the incoming rate is variable and the outgoing rate is constant. But I cannot think of any other situations. Oh, thank you, my bad. Five pebbles per tenner. That's the kind, you've seen several of those. Yeah. There are, good job, Ben. There is an entering rate and a leaving rate. There's an in rate and an out rate. Lots of the Right, okay. entering I, and I leaving. Mean, I no worries, I don't catch that either, Abby, I'm serious. Like, I'll do problems like this for years, okay. and five years later, I'll go, oh, that's why they did that, I don't know. <laughs> but it's really what Nathan said, in rate and out rate. Sometimes they're combined. When you have a moving particle, the velocity is a combined rate. It takes care of both. You don't have a you don't have like one velocity for moving to the right, different velocity moving to the left. Although you could, they never have. But this is very good. Is that that's what you meant, right? Yeah. That's very good. That's again going back to that keeping your mounts and your rates clear in your minds. So please, Brianna. I just want to like say it out loud. Please, <laughs> absolutely. You just have to hear me, but I don't know if you notice it. So <laughs> thanks. <laughs> so the, bus drive by. Go ahead. This problem is similar to the ones where we have the in rate and the out rate. But then there's also problems where you might get just a rate that's moving the whole thing. So it could be negative. With like, uh, I, I don't know what I'm saying. Yes. Could yes, have started yes, as sure. a negative rate. Yeah, um, just never just said. Let's keep talking. This, okay. No, I'm serious. <laughs> the, the discussion we're having, I don't. I hope you know my personality well enough to know that I'm always mindful of what's efficient to talk about. So I won't really, I'll tend to not let the class start drifting into something where you really aren't going to get a lot of points. But if it's a topic where it shows up a lot, I want to talk about it until it's clear to you. And this shows up a lot. Um, I think what you're saying is, would they ever give you a problem where they give you a rate and the rate itself can be positive and negative, and then you're supposed to reverse it. Yeah, so like, Is that what you're saying? Like, would there be a problem where you wouldn't have to make it negative and you didn't make a problem? Yes. So like, yes. I want to do that. Let me give you an example of that one. Now, I can't remember the symbols, so I have to just make them up. Is that okay? So, a problem that you have done in your past which I think will be more helpful because then you can remember the problem. Good job, Matt. Thank you. Is there was a problem that said the number of mosquitoes on an island is changing at the following rate. And I don't remember the, the symbol they used, but I think they just used RFT. That was the rate at which the number of mosquitoes is changing. If you had graphed RFT, you find RFT to be positive and negative both. So that means RFT is accounting for both the in rate and the out rate already, just built into the formula. You with me? Mm -hmm. So if I'm thinking down at this chart, I've got amount and rate. In this example, I would simply say, let's let n be the number of mosquitoes. I feel bad I didn't tell Kim good job. Okay, oh. um, somebody text her for me, please. I will. Okay. I'm serious. <laughs> I, I feel bad. I said, good job to everybody. She's so modest, she just sneaks out quietly. Um, therefore, the rate at which n is changing is definitely just r. So n prime is just equal to r. Are you comfortable with that? Yes. Was that your question in part? Yes. So other problems will give us the in rate and we'll give us the out rate, and then we'll say what, like, they can like have a combine those two rates just the one to get like the positive and negative like it's already built in. Right. So we're so saying like at time to go this, like how many mosquitoes are and you have to count for like the positive and the negative and you just add them right. together. Let me give you that example. <laughs> so there was a problem on a test, it might have been a retake, yeah. that said, hey, the number of penguins on an island. Yeah. And they said P was the number of penguins. And then they said, the penguins are being born at such and such a rate. Yeah. They're being, they're being died. <laughs> it's worse than me. Stand in front of a room and grammar, it's all screwed up. Because you're trying to do math and speak all at the same time. So um, the rate at which penguins are being born, they said, was uh, B of T. And they gave a formula. Yeah. 
The rate at which they die, they said, was d of t. And they gave a formula. But if you graph both of these, these are always positive numbers. Exactly. Okay? So then we can just do d of t minus d of t. If we right, so you say d prime. Like r prime t, whatever. Yep, it's exactly what Nathan said before. You count the birth rate as a positive because it's causing for you to go up. You count the death rate as a negative because it's causing for you to go down. That's how you would combine the two rates. Cool. The problem you just did, you had water in a tank, and the rate they gave you was simply the rate at which water leaves. So that's why we ended up with this. Wait, so why is the one in pink, why is that positive? Why is this one here? Yeah. So in this problem they said, the rate at which mosquitoes both die and are born is combined into one single rate. And the way they said it was, they just said the rate of change of the number of mosquitoes. So the rate of change of the number of mosquitoes is R. Okay, yeah, yeah. So they didn't say it was the rate of them being born or the rate of them dying, it was just the rate of change. Okay. In this problem, you had to create the rate of change yourself. Right. Using both rates. And then the next one. We had to create the rate ourselves basically as well. Yeah. Does that help a little? Yeah. Good work, guys. Brianne, is that better? Mm -hmm.